As with most media streamers on the market today, you can either use a remote control or you can actually use an app on your iOS or Android device. So in this video, I'm going to show you a BoxyBox remote app on Android and on iOS. Now you have several options to choose from on both platforms. Some you pay for and some are free. Now there are specific apps written for iPad and iPhone. In this case, I'm going to show you an iPad app and a regular Android app. So let's get started. Now if you can see here on my iPad 3, there's an app over here called Control, and then there's another app over here called Boxy. The Boxy app over here is an iPhone app, and Control is an iPad app. So we're going to click on Control here and open up the app. I'm going to try and show this to you. Obviously, the iPad is fairly large. Fortunately, we're only going to focus on the upper right-hand corner up here. Now, this Control app seems to allow you to access media from your Boxy onto your iPad, but it will not allow you to do this with the Boxy box. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's Boxy software that you can put on your computer, whether it be Mac, Linux, or Windows. You can find a version of it on download.com. Boxy no longer supports that. Boxy is focusing on the Boxy Box hardware. So if you can see here, you have several options to control the device. I'm going to go to the middle selection up here, which says remote. What you get here is a directional control with a select button in the center and a mute button up here and a back button there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click up here and there we go. So here we are on the Boxy apps here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the remote here to back out of that. I'm just going to hit the back button here. And it brings me to the menu here. And I'm going to go over to web. And I'm doing this all on the app here. So I want to bring up a web page. So I'm going to click on the keyboard icon in the upper right hand corner up here and it brings up the keyboard, the on-screen keyboard. And with the new version of iOS, you actually have the microphone, the speech-to-text option on this device. So I'm going to click on that. YouTube.com Okay, apparently it only got the Y. Let me try to actually spell it out. Y-O-U T-U-B-E dot com. Okay, not working out too well. But fortunately, we still do have the on-screen keyboard down here. So let me type out YouTube on it the old-fashioned way. There we go. Hit return. All right, hitting return won't launch it, so I'm just going to go back to the remote app up here and click on select. There we go. So I don't know if you can see here, but I'm actually pushing on the directional button on the app here, and it's moving the pointer on the screen. So I'm actually going to go to the boxy box unboxing down here. And click select. Okay, in this video, we're going to do an unboxing of the Boxy Box. Now, now I can actually the mute the video straight from the app here. So if you look in the upper right hand corner, there's a mute button. I'm going to toggle it on and off here. On Xbox Media. And it's pretty instantaneous. Now, a lot of media streamers have iOS and Android apps that you can control them with. So this feature for Boxy isn't unique, but it is a nice feature to have. Even though the Boxy Box remote has a keyboard on the back of it, a full QWERTY keyboard, it's still nice to have the on-screen keyboard of your Android or iOS device, especially if you're in a dark room. Because the keyboard on the Boxy remote isn't backlit but obviously your tablet or cell phone is. So that was control for the iPad 3. 
And as I said, there are several different apps that you can choose from. This one just so happened to be a free app. I saw another app on there for $2.99. Pick what you find is going to work best for you. Now let's move on to Android. So as you can see here on my Motorola Atrix 4G, I did a search for Boxy Remote on Google Play. And this is what it pulled up. So you see there are many options, and it appears that most of them are for free. We're going to focus on Boxy Wi-Fi Remote, which I already have installed on my device here. So you can see in my app drawer here, my Boxy app is here, so I'm going to launch that. And that's what it looks like. It says Boxy Remote App for Android, press Menu to begin. So that would be the Menu button down here. And I'm going to hit Scan. And it's scanning for my Boxy. That's my Boxy, so I'm going to hit the button here. And there we go. Basically a virtual representation of the real thing. Now as you saw there, I had to search for the Boxy Box on this app. On the iOS app, it just automatically linked with the Boxy when I launched it for the first time. So let's just try the navigation out here and move it around. Seems pretty responsive. Then of course you have your select button in the center, you have your play pause button up top, and your back to menu button down here. So let's press that button. And it brings up the home menu. As you can see, I can navigate around on it, but what I really want is just to go back to web. So I'm going to click on that and hit OK. Now it appears on this app that there is not an on-screen keyboard that I can access, but we'll see if that's the case. So right now it says enter URL on my web browser here, so I'm going to click OK on the device here and actually an on-screen keyboard popped up on the device, so that's nice. So as it popped up on the screen, when needed, it'll pop up on this app. So voice-to-text has been synonymous with Android for quite some time. So let's try out the voice-to-text feature on this. I'm going to click on the microphone down here. YouTube.com Okay, again, we have failure here. We only got the M. Let's clear that out and try it again. Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot C-O-M. Again, only the M. So that's a little disappointing. Some of the streaming boxes allow you to do voice to text on their Android apps. Maybe there is an app for the Boxy that does allow that, but obviously I haven't come across it yet. So let me just use the virtual keyboard on the Android phone here to type out YouTube. Okay, same situation. I'm going to use the directional pad here to move the pointer on the screen there, as you can see, just by holding it down. In this app, it seems a little bit slower than the iOS version. So here we go, I'm on my video page here, and I'm going to move it down. And this is actually painfully slow to move the cursor in the web browser with this app. Usually you're not using a cursor or a pointer, uh, but you do use it in the web interface on this device. Normally it's just a left or right or up or down click on the directional button. So I'm going to click on another one of my videos here. This is the Boxy Box Hands-On Overview Part 2 that featured a look at the apps on the device here. And I'm going to click the OK button here. And it should launch it. So there you go. You can actually control your Boxy Box with an Android or an iOS app. Unfortunately, neither app allowed you to use voice-to-text effectively, but it is a nice option to control your device with either your cell phone or your tablet. And again, like I said, these are not the only apps available, but I did pick them for this demonstration. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.